Phase failure relays, also known as phase monitors, are installed to protect expensive motors from different unacceptable conditions. You'll see these in many mag starter panels and inside equipment like large air handlers to protect expensive motors and the associated equipment. Now there are different makes, configurations, and models out there, but today we're going to look at a common type that's installed in an 8-pin base. Here's our base. Now this is a Macromatic brand uh, and it's simi similar to other socket-mounted phase relays out there. First, let's look at the nomenclature on the relay. It mentions that it has three-phase monitor relay. It's a three-phase monitor relay, PMPU, voltage line to line, 19500 volts, AC. So this PMPU is a designation that refers to all the features that this comes with. That's, we'll go to that in, in a moment. So over here on the top, you'll see the line-to-line -line voltage that we were referring to. We'll get a little closer in there. And right here, the arrow is pointed at 240-480. So we'll just assume we're going to work with that voltage right now. So when you plug this into its base that's monitoring the uh, system, it's going to automatically detect which voltage that it is. So let's say it's 480 for right now. It's also going to detect the phase sequence of the motor. Remember we have A, B, and C phases here. Now this relay is, after, is energized after a restart delay is completed. Okay, So this too can be set on the unit. And you can see the, re uh, the restart delay right here. And you can uh, set that from 1 to 300 seconds. So let's look at the wiring socket diagram here. Okay, it's an 8-pin round base configuration. Now, looking at the pinout, we see that um, we have A phase on pin 3, we have B phase on pin 4, we have C phase on pin 5. 6 and 7 are set aside for a manual reset, reset if you wanted to have an external momentary switch. But right now, we're going to assume that we don't need this. Um, this thing will automatically reset if you don't use a manual reset upon uh, fixing a fault condition. But here's where some more of the magic takes place on um, pins 1, 8, and 2. Okay, so I'm going to show you this on more of a, a, a ladder diagram or a wiring diagram that um, actually comes with this unit. And uh, this is um, pretty handy in seeing what's going on with this. Okay, so let's look at let's look at uh, how this wiring diagram here. So this is a this is a L1, L2, L3. This would be on the line side of your starter, okay? And you can see how that's going to, you know, L1, which is A phase, goes to pin three. This is the uh, the uh, eight pin base that that relay sits on, okay. L2, which is B phase, goes over here to pin 4, and L3, which is C phase, goes over here to pin 5. Now what they've also shown here, um, right here are some inline fuses that's up to you if you want to put in there. And what that those fuses would be for is to protect the, um, the device, the phase monitor relay itself, not the, not the motor, okay. Now, let's look what else is going on here. Do you see where it says M right here? So these are the normally open contacts. These are the contacts that happen on your mag starter. So when your mag starter engages, those contacts close, and then that passes through the voltage through each phase to a, the three, through the overloads, then to the three-phase motor that we're trying to run. Okay. So far, so good. Now let's look at what else is going on here. And uh, then below this, we start getting into a wiring or a ladder diagram. So from a wiring diagram to the ladder diagram, and the ladder diagram is going to show you um, how this this is talking about the pins one, two, and eight. Once again, pins one, two, and eight shown here on the relay itself. So pin one, you know, if you remember. 
over here, pin one is a common. Okay, so that common, let's trace that back here. That common is going to go to neutral. Okay, this is my control circuit. So when I say neutral, I'm talking about the control circuit. And we'll get into those things a little bit more, but for right now, I just see that that one is common to neutral. Okay, because you have on your control circuit L for hot. Okay, so then, okay, so one's to neutral. So what's two? Two goes to this alarm light over here. Okay, on the other side of the alarm light, you see L. Well, that alarm light could be illuminated. Well, let's see the conditions that'll cause it. Now, the last thing, this is our motor starter right here. Okay, a stop-start station. So we have line voltage, we have stop, we have start, we have our holding contact, and M. So what, and, and overloads goes back here. So let's back up a little bit. What is this circle M here? Well, that M is the motor, um, is your relay coil. The relay coil, when it closes, will close these M relays, which will allow those phases to go through here to um, run that motor, okay? This other M is associated with this, and that's your holding contact. So after you hit the stop bu start button, it's going to energize that circuit and keep it going. Okay? And again, we're going to get more into that as time goes by with ladder uh, diagrams. This is a basic start-stop station, which you're going to see many times in the coming weeks. So following that through here, where does it go? It goes to pin 8 on our phase monitor relay. Well, how's that working? So let's go down here and we can see that from pin 1 is connected to pin 2 right now. It's not connected. It's not touching pin 8 right here. So now you have to um, reflect back on this. So remember when you're looking at any kind of a circuit, when you're looking at a drawing of a circuit, you'll always see it in its de-energized state. That means Nothing's gone on. This is off the shelf. This is before any power has been applied to this. So how this is working is, okay, if I have this, if I have my A, B, C phases and everything is hooked up and I've got my line voltage, it's all doing well, that's going to energize this relay. So this, these three phases being on will energize that relay. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the energi that energized relay changes these contact states. So you'll see one going over to eight right after that, okay, instead of two. Again, this energizes the relay and then it changes the state of the contact. So this common flips over and now it touches eight, it doesn't touch two if everything is fine. Well, what happens over here? So if you look at that, since now pin one and eight, are now touching, that means that this circuit goes to neutral, which means this motor would run, right? So if you are in pin eight, it's, it's energized through here. I'm gonna be able to start my coil contacts, close them over here, and let my voltage go to run my three-phase motor. Okay, now what's the other condition? Well, let's say, one, I have a problem on one of these three phases, okay? If I have a problem on one of these three phases, then this relay will not energize. It'll be stuck between uh, pins one and two right here. Well, what's gonna happen then? So if we remember, uh, if one and two are touching, right? We have hot over here, this L on this control circuit at this alarm light. And now, on the other side of it, one and two are touching, so we're supplying a neutral to that light, so it will illuminate. So in other words, it tells you that it's in an alarm condition, okay? So this is a pretty handy little uh, diagram that can show you quite a bit what's going on with this uh, phase monitor. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about the basic functions of this phase failure relay. We're going to get into this particular um, type of monitor relay and show you some of the functions it has. Um, real handy here, as, you, as we've talked about earlier, you can set the different percentages of unbalance. As we're seeing here, of course we have already set our line-to-line -line voltage. We can set uh, our trip point 
at a percentage value for under voltage that this device would um, prevent the motor from starting. Uh, we talked again about the trip delay before it happened. So if we had just a, a very short event, uh, sometimes we want to give it a little bit of uh, time before it samples that motor, particularly on something like a startup, before it might trip and this goes into effect. Um, and then the restart delay after we have uh, reset um, this, uh, we have reset a, a fault condition into normal <clears throat> before it would uh, re-energize and let the uh, max starter work. Now let's bring our attention here to some of these functions here. So you see a status LED that'll be lit up uh, on energization. Again, energization means that when this is plugged into its base, and I did put the base on over here for you to see, okay, that this can plug into. And uh, you know, you'll you'll see on the base too that it's keyed out, and if you look close enough here you can even see the the numbers on on the base for the pinout um, particularly here see three and four five and so on uh, these are uh, marked for you when you're trying to troubleshoot this without any power on the circuit if we're looking at the bottom of the relay again we can see the key right here so it's only going to fit into that base a certain way well, looking back at some of this troubleshooting stuff, so what does all this mean? We have, we have if that LED lights up green, it could have a normal condition as is specified as an on state here. If you would think of this as a digital um, readout from the bottom of that mesa, let's call it, uh, would be a zero or off, and the top of it would be an on, this would be a normal condition. If we see restart, then we have these little up and down, kind of a sawtooth looking thing. Um, if it was in red, we have uh, a reversal for that. Um, Mesa looking, call it, let's call it a Mesa condition for the loss. Uh, for unbalance, you can see you have a peak here every so often. For low volt, you have two peaks with a pause and again. And if you have a high voltage, you have three peaks. So that's really handy. You know, you come across, let's say, a motor, uh, and, and you're looking inside the max starter um, case for this thing, and you might see the, these different uh, flashes on the status bar. That really helps you uh, narrow down to what the problem might be so you can remedy the situation and get it get the motor going so uh, once again we're looking at our our, our cut sheet for this um, very handy to have so as you can see here we're going into either more uh, this troubleshooting guide here helps you uh, narrow down things pretty quickly um, for instance motors not starting uh, maybe it's waiting for a reset if we have a manual reset um, over here in the green here, it says the relays in the run mode and working properly. Either another control device is preventing the motor from starting or all wiring should be checked. So on and so forth. So these cut sheets are extremely handy to have um, around your motor. And one thing I always uh, like to see and one thing I recommend if you ever install a let's say a mag starter with something like this like a phase monitor relay in it uh, I always uh, am very um, adamant about making sure that the supportive literature is going to be there for the guy who has to work on it um, you know I, I do service work uh, solely now and uh, you know I'm on that uh, on that end of it where I work on so many different types of motors, that type of thing, and if I come across this thing, I see different types of other ones, I'm going to want to have this cut sheet handy somewhere so I can go ahead and try to troubleshoot this and figure out what the problem is that's holding that motor from starting. So once again, if you're on the installation end of this, please make sure that you include 
you know, all literature that has to do with this inside of that motor starter. You can simply fold it up and put it on the side. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up uh, this basic tutorial on a phase failure relay. Hope this helps.